Hello. About two days ago, I decided that I wanted to come up with my own six color limited watercolor palette. And I have been, <laughs> I've been making very heavy weather of coming up with my six colors. Ever since I've put together my travel kit and this is the paint palette I've got in it at the moment. Um, since I did that, I've become a little bit obsessed with thinking about um, making a really tiny travel palette as well just for really short you know adventures something i can fit in my pocket and i've got a couple of products coming in the post shortly that i'm looking forward to and will show you but in the meantime i'm planning which six colors i want to have so i did some research online and i had a look at um, some youtubers and the colors that they choose for or that they have chosen at some point um, and talked about on YouTube. There were a couple of the colours that they mentioned which I didn't have. So I've chosen the nearest colour and I used the Smith dot card for that. So I've, I've managed to get reasonably close. There's actually a reasonable amount of variation between between the different um, choices. This one quite interested me. This is Michael Solovyev, and he's got quite an unusual choice there. No yellow, no red, as such. So I, <laughs> I'll put a photo up because I have to show you what real life is like at this house. Um, this was my mess from yesterday and I just spent ages playing around with colours and changing my mind and I changed my mind I don't know how many times. And then what I did was just look at the type of painting I want to do with this colour palette and realistically it's going it's going to be something i grab and take out on a walk in my local area which is coastal and quite countrysidey so for example this um this uh, my first plein air painting that i did earlier in the week these are going to be pretty typical of the kind of colors i want to achieve so i definitely bore that in mind and made sure that I could get to these kind of colours quite easily without having to mix too many different colours together. So that was definitely a consideration. So I'll paint out my choice kind of in a colour wheel layout so you can see how the colours work and what mixes I can get from them in context. Oops. So this is basically the red that I've chosen and this is um, Daniel Smith's Cronacridone Rose, which is, I was using like pliers and my like crimper to get the very last drops out, a bit sad about that. Okay, this, I'm classing this as a warm yellow, but really it's closer to the centre of the circle because um, it's such a brown yellow. But this is Quinacridone Deep Gold uh, from Daniel Smith. And again, that one's looking a little bit bedraggled. Then I have chosen a cooler yellow. Um, this is Snellier's Lemon Yellow. Incidentally, the paintbrush I'm using um, is an Escoda Perla number no. six. Um, it's one of the brushes I got 
in my recent art haul. It doesn't hold as much water as um, some of my other brushes, but I've, I really, really like the level of control, especially for you know painting a circle like this. And yeah, it's just, I tried out a few I was just playing earlier on and because I'm just still getting used to the few new brushes that I've got and this was the one that just I felt happiest for doing these circles. So for my blues I have actually got a split primary again which basically means you've got your primary colour, the red, yellow or blue, but it's split into a cool version and a warm version. So the cool version I've got, well it's very cool, it's tur turquoise really, um, is Snellier's Thalo Cyanine Turquoise. Whoops, just got a splotch of yellow in that. This paper I'm using is just a sheet that's out of um, moleskin. Or moleskine. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, watercolour book, which I've torn up. Um, it just had some colour samples in it. But I really, I feel like I'm in a minority, but I really do not enjoy the moleskin watercolour pads. Anyway, and then the other, the, the other blue I've got. Sorry, I've just, I'm struggling slightly because I've just refilled quite a few of the colours in this palette, and they've not set, so they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit hard to work with and claggy still. And the sixth colour which I've chosen, which I think I've chosen, um, is actually Warm Sepia from Snellier. So I'll put that in the middle as it's a mixture of red, yellow and blue. I've changed this sixth colour so much. Um, I was thinking of having Payne's Grey for a while and I played around with that a bit. It makes these beautiful deep um, turquoises with the phthalo turquoise. But when I looked back at my sketchbook, this kind of quite cool brown, although it's, yeah, it's warm sepia but for a brown it's still one of my cooler ones it's just such a useful colour I ended up choosing colours which are all single pigment colours just added that information on there Right, so I'll show you a few of the mixers now that I like, that I can achieve just with these six colours. So one of the colours that I'm missing at first glance uh, is red. So I'm just going to paint in small little circles of colours that I've mixed up from my initial six. So this isn't like a, a pure, a vibrant red, but that's that's still, I think, a reasonably decent one. I'm just going to try doing this by lines. It might end up being a huge mess, but we'll have a go. So that's Quin Rose and Quin Deep Gold. And as far as oranges go,
So that's an orange, which is the lemon yellow and the quinacridone rose. And obviously when you mix the, um, the quinacridone deep gold and the lemon yellow. And you get these more ochre colours. So this one looks quite watery. You can actually get a stronger yellow. Uh, sorry, can, a stronger orange. You're not going to get a true bright orange because the quinacridone rose is a very cool red, meaning it's got a lot of blue in it. So here you're mixing yellow, the red that's got the blue in it as well. So you've got all three colours being mixed. When you mix all three, you get brown. So this is quite a browny orange. Okay, so we're missing purples as well. Let's take a look at the purples we can get. Quite a nice one with quinacridone rose and French ultramarine. But I also really, really love the colours that I get mixing the quinacridone rose and the phthalo turquoise. Pop that in here. And obviously you can vary oops you can vary the degree of or well, the ratio of which the two paints you put in. Okay, then let's take a look at some greens. So one of my one of the colours that was really important to me um, to be able to mix were good olive greens, like really natural landscapey greens. Um, so yeah, these kind of very muted, earthy kind of greens um, and olive. Let me find another one. Yeah, and just olivey greens. I yeah, I want to be able to mix these kind of colours. And that's mainly why I chose quinacridone deep gold, because I really, really like the colour, the greens that I can get um, from it. So that's one with quinacridone gold and phthalo turquoise. And then because French ultramarine is a warm blue, meaning it's got red in it, and because 
the uh, quinacridone deep gold is a very warm yellow meaning there's lots of red in it when i mix these two colors there's a lot of red in that mixture meaning i get a very brown looking green from it um i'll do that down here so i absolutely love uh, the French Ultramarine and Quinacridone Deep Gold Greens. Um. <laughs> My line system's going to get a bit messed up now. There we go. I can also get super, super bright greens as well, though, with these six. Okay, so that's my cool lemon yellow and my cool phalo turquoise. And then when I mix the warm French ultramarine with the cool lemon yellow, I'm getting a slightly olivey colour because of the, the warmth, or well, the red in here. But you get another whole range of lovely, lovely, slightly olivey greens. So I've got a pretty decent range of colours there. At one point I experimented with um, including like a turquoise green, you know, a cobalt turquoise instead of phthalo turquoise, just because I can't achieve that really, I can't achieve this really bright, lovely turquoise that I like. but it's quite an opaque color and it didn't it doesn't mix as well or I didn't think it mixed as well so I've got I've got my primaries I've got my um pretty decent secondary colors and my as I said my choice was to be able to get some good greens and then our tertiary color the only tube one I've got is the brown but I'll show you some of the mixes we can make using that now. I'll just put these down here. So I really, really like these kind of like perylene green, dark forest colours. And this is warm sepia and phalo turquoise. And, and then there's this lovely kind of Payne's grey, really. Mm -hmm. 
and that was warm sepia and French ultramarine. Unfortunately, my uh, phone camera cut out, so I'll just show you these last few mixes that I made. I was saying that when you mix the warm sepia with any of these kind of orangey yellowies that you've got, you're going to get a whole range of. Sorry, has my dog under my chair? You're going to get a whole range of nice um, browns. And then I mixed warm sepia with quinacridone rose. And depending on the proportion of either, you can you can go from almost like a cap up mortemy colour, uh, Indian ready type colour, right through, you know, to naphthied maroon. So that's a, that's a really nice mix. And then, then I wanted to see if I could um, get this turquoise that I was so keen on when I was trying out Payne's Grey. And I'm quite happy that, um, that I managed to get something quite close. It's not dried yet, this one hasn't. And that was, I used the warm sepia and French ultramarine grey mix and just put some uh, phthalo turquoise in it. I had wanted to include Verdita because I'm really enjoying using that straight out of the tube as a sky colour. Um, but when I was doing trials with it, it didn't mix very well. Um, it has got some white pigment in it. Here's my little tube. I also have the issue that I've completely run out. <laughs> um, I've just got a few a bit left in a couple of palettes. So what what I did was um mixed French ultramarine with a tiniest bit of phthalo turquoise. So it's not turquoise looking as such, but the yellow in it was just enough to knock back the blue a bit. And then this is my Daniel Smith Verditor. So I'm pretty pleased that I can get quite a close approximation there. So yeah, that's my that's my palette that I'm going to try out for a little while. And hopefully our post lady comes soon with a little package for me with a home for these six colours. I'm curious to know as well if you've done a limited palette with six colours or, or even fewer, which your choice would be and why. Though don't make too compelling a case because I don't want to change this already. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Hopefully you'll join me again. Bye.